What's up guys, it's the next day and I am ready. Put a little bit of time in this. Funny story, I lost the keys for this thing. Uh, but luckily Amazon has keys delivered tomorrow for like $6. So yeah, I don't know where they went. This, it's a long story, but. All right, we're here. One nice thing is this battery tray folds up, <clears throat> folds down to pull it off. That's kind of a cool feature. There's some little things on this tractor that are cool. So what we got is a feeler gauge, uh, flathead. I had a flathead. There it is. And we're gonna pull this inspection cover off. Um, if you actually while we're here, if you didn't see the progress last night, so water jacket, exhaust manifold, um, and I just threw this coil pack on. But what we can do now is open up this inspection cover and read on the flywheel as we turn over with the 13 16ths to get, uh, we'll put a screwdriver in there, get TDC, pull this valve cover off, and then we'll set all our valves. It shouldn't be that bad. I just couldn't do it last night because uh, my brain was fried. There's a mark on this engine block. Uh, number one should be on top dead center right now. It says DC. So let's go to our valves. Right. Adjusting valve clearance on number one cylinder. The 12 thou on my feeler gauge. 15, 14, 13, 12. 12 and 18. I don't know if I have 18. Yeah, I do. It's on the back side. Oh, I shouldn't have put that water jacket on. Got a little bit of lube. Alright, we brought the big guns here. Just a little bit of heat. Turn engine half revolution and set four and then two so this one's next so one three four two this is weird it must be like pop 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 so far everything's lining up All right, book says gap of 25 thou on the spark plugs. They should be there already, but I like to check it. It's just over. I'm gonna leave it. All right, it says 35 foot pounds. I don't like torquing spark plugs even at the correct setting. I do it by feel. With a small 3 ace, not a big one. There. So what we want to do now is um, set this distributor on, right? So I know it's backwards right now because of the paint. Also, oh my god. I might have to buy a new distributor. Maybe I'll switch it. All right. Don't have much battery life left in this, but let's see if we can clean some of this up. That's all we got. Yes. 
しますね。these and the kit kind of weird so as you saw it's not attached it's just like a purely metallic piece hopefully it fits I was hoping I could do it after I actually didn't think these were metallic I thought they were composite Crooked, so just a little bit. All right, so I just got it to do some stuff. I don't have fuel ran to it yet, but uh, I guess I could pull a spark plug, see if I'm getting spark. Maybe I'll just get some fuel real quick, but let's check this out. That is so cool. All right. I don't know if I'm going to spark it. I don't have the fuel ran to it. Let's do the fuel first. I mean, I guess we have no spark, and my fuel setup's kind of janky, but um, I'm going to try to give it some carb cleaner, and then crank it. See what happens. I mean, starting for it. Go look at the wiring. Here's our coil, which could be bad. The coil only has one wire on it, and that goes to this resistor. Just a test clamp right now. And I brought my light over. We can see if we're getting. 12 volts to that coil, so that should go through the resistor. I should get it from here with the key on. Okay, I just watched a video on checking the ohms. 11, and I'm at 7 point. Oh, it's jumping up to 11. I wonder if it's bad contact. 7.52 is where it sits. Because I could also have points issues here, but I'm just taking it baby step. See if any of this copper is good at all. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's decent. All right, so I just was reading the book, and this is a positive ground tractor. So 
So I hope I didn't break anything there. Oh man. The starter must have been in reverse. I don't know. Okay. Unless it was converted, I don't know. Alright, let's see if we can flush this radiator. Let's see if anything comes out. Delivered. My keys are delivered. Very nice. Doesn't look too bad. Sorry, because there hasn't been anything in it. Alright guys, we got spark. Ended up changing the points. And the other ones might have worked because I found out I was missing a connection on the like ground basically for the uh, for the points. I'm gonna hook up my little temp fill tank here again. See if we get anything. Now again, I don't have the cooling system on this. But that's just me being cheap because it's probably uh, 30, 40 bucks in hoses that I need to get for that. And uh, I just didn't want to get them until it fired. So it'll be fine. Running for a few seconds. I might even, um, I've cleared out around this. If it, if it fires and idles, I'll try to go forward and reverse so we can see if the tranny works. That's the other big thing we want to prove out with this. Be flying. So I have the choke zip tied on. And I don't know my fuel settings. But we're going to give it just the smallest whiff. I think I had too much last time. I missed. There we go. And let's see what happens, guys. That's out. Pull that out. Get a rag in there. Neutral. Oh, I forgot to tighten that spark plug. possible because I have the choke on. It's doing this. Let's watch the valves while it turns over. Squeak is. All right, we'll give the starter a break. All right, so I just did a compression test and got the 65, 95, 98, 90, which is kind of low, but I knew the first one was going to be low. I don't know if that's causing a problem, but I have spark. It's really weak. I just switched to the other, uh, not capacitor, um, coil. And I still have about the same weak spark. It might be a little weaker, but I'm gonna try a little carb cleaner on that. Still think we have fuel issues. What I might do is do it, do it the old school way where you dribble a little gas into the uh, cylinder holes and then fire, but. I'm getting, watch this, I'm getting a good puff on here. I don't know if I can do it, but it's puffing out good. I'm gonna see if I get suction here. Oh yeah, that, that's good suction. The carb's sucking good. To me, it doesn't smell like it's combusting. I'm gonna check the minimum compression on the book. All right, we got a little bit of combustion. Backfiring. 
guys heard that. So it's backfiring, so that means something's out. Spark order's out. I think my firing order's backwards. Probably has enough compression. We know that our compression's low. 125 was the mm -hmm. spec, and the highest I had was 98. Um, but I'm wondering if some of that is because the pistons need broken in. You guys see that? Set my starter on fire. Ooh, that felt good. All right, so. Oh my God. starter is hot baby all right we're gonna let that go for a little bit that starter is getting hot Woo! so close I think that's the correct timing I think it's just I might put my battery charger on there see if we can get the crank a little faster Alright, so my buddy came over last night and we ended up getting this thing running. It'll run on ether and we filled the carb up with gas and then put it back on and it ran off that. I wasn't able to film my battery and SD card were full when it was late, so but it still won't run perpetually, you know, off the carb. So either the float is stuck or the carb's not getting gas. So I'm gonna pull this off um, and blow it out with air. The other thing is the drain fitting on the bottom is clogged up with stuff. So we can't, we, we weren't able to check if the carb had fuel in it, um, which is why it, you know, we were having all those issues. So I just rebuilt this carb, but I forgot about that bottom uh, piece there. I figured the drain would work, but uh, I guess not. It's, it was all clogged up with stuff, so. And we have two issues. We can't tell if we get fuel into the carb, and then also it's not running too, so it has to be, you know, like jetted 
we have to make sure we have everything proper so I still don't have cooling stuff for this I didn't even buy it yet I want to get it I want to get this thing idling today um, so I got to figure out like where all these brackets go like this is supposedly the, the choke one so let's let's look at that right now for a second so here's your main throttle bracket right here coming in and I assume that that goes on here see this was never set up before I got it so okay so I assume that goes there but where it mounts no idea that doesn't seem right it seems way too long and basically there's a governor on the front of this and then Oh, I just dropped it. And a choke, and then like a bump throttle, like a tractor has. Oh, why did I do that? Stop. There, that's like low. It's too low. Yeah. There it is. Okay, so that actually fits right there. This is all wonky here. And there's another one here. That would be all the way down. That's all the way up. Let me, I'm going to get some of my metal brackets and see if we can figure that out. Because I know there's a water plate bracket here and something else. Alright, so I still can't figure out this throttle linkage, but... Okay. Alright, let's get some gas in the... Uh... see right there that thing fired up nice all right so we know it runs now which is great so now what I want to do is hook up the throttle linkage so I can bump it up from up here and that just took me a long time to figure out because um, this bracket was bent and it was sitting like way down here I found out where it goes it actually bolts to the water manifold here and there's some sort of a heat shield which I can't find I'm like holding up parts, like trying to see like, man, nah, that wouldn't fit. So I don't even know what this is. I messed up and I definitely didn't take enough pictures when I started three years ago. So, but um, yeah, I know where this goes. Should probably change those bolts, but I think I can get to them pretty easy later. So we got to back these two out and then um, take the carb back off to get this rod you know up here it's gonna go across here right down here you know for that and what that does is allow you to bump the uh, governor here which I have that already tied back to the uh, main throttle right now and then uh, it's a choke cable which I have here I've never seen if that moves oh it does That's really nice too. So I guess while we have the carb up, we'll hook that up and that goes right in here into that choke right here. So then we can actually choke it. 
probably drip a little bit of lube in there real quick. All right, so we need this to come off, 9 sixteenths on the carb, and we'll put that choke on. Then that'll be ready, and then hopefully we can get some fuel in there and kind of actually control the whole thing. And what I want to do before I get too much further on this is make sure the transmission works. So I think next I'll crack this breather up here. I think this is, uh, I don't actually, I think it's the power steering unit um, that's run off the tranny. I want to make sure there's not like a ton of water in there. And then I don't know if there's actually a dipstick on the transmission. I've never looked at it, but I'd love to crack it loose and just see if it's like 100% full of water. But then what I'll do is I'll just roll it back, you know, roll it forward. And uh, oh, I got to put the steering on to do that, um, which is kind of a pain. Actually, I probably won't because it's kind of a pain. It goes through the gas tank and all this stuff. If that works, then I'm going to order my float bowl gasket for the fuel tank. And now order all my rad hoses. So I got um, my water pump here. It goes on here. I've got to blow these holes out. They have ant uh, stuff in them. The one thing I didn't like, and I just wanted to document this, was when I was just running it, I was getting um, blow by out of this hole some oil there's a chance that's residual like the it's heating up on the outside of the cylinders i had oil on it and burning off or i don't have a good seal on the water so my buddy had a really good idea he came over last night and helped me with this he said just pull your thermostat out which is in here um, so pull it out and just let it run open loop and it'll always cool itself sort of like lower pressure without the thermostat restricting that flow. And then I could check it with like a, you know, FLIR, see what temp we're running. Um, and with the fan at low idle, it should be okay. If not, we'll put thermostat back in, but anything to eliminate some of the pressure on that water system, just in case my liner for some reason isn't seated or whatever. Then we have to pull this all apart again, which I don't want to do. And then also on the list is this fuel, um, I'm sorry, the air intake cleaner. That probably all just needs to come out and redo it. And then I had a wiring issue yesterday. Uh, melted this wire, it arced off my janky setup. So I need to at least rewire. Uh, I've been using like those alligator clips getting by, but I need to at least rewire like here to the coil pack, which is mounted there. I've got the uh, crankcase breather on here too. I guess the valve assembly breather. Um, let's see what else. A lot of little things, and every bolt needs wired wire or brushed. Every hole needs blown out and tapped. Every surface needs cleaned off. So it's just like, oh my god. But I think now that I got this, I'm gonna pause on the water pump and get these fuel line or these um these lines hooked up. This is the temperature sending unit for this. I need to pop that off and get a new one as well. So that should go to my coolant temp. And all, oh, I left the key on. I hate that. I do that all the time. Um, I think this PTO works because this is, um, I'm sorry, this gauge works because it goes, the speedometer cable goes right into the thing. It's just RPM. But I haven't actually checked that either, so I'll have to check it. Fuel sending unit, I'm probably not even going to put one in, but I would like to get a, a temp. And then the generator is going to be like the last thing we do, because I'm going to have to rewire a bunch of stuff. Um, but yeah. So let me get all this stuff on, and then we'll prep for putting this in reverse. That's the plan. Alright, so we know that it runs, but let's see if it can drive. So I got everything on, I got my fuel thing set up, choke set up, idled down, out of gear, see if we can get to idle.
think that's all the gas we got. The clutch was like way at the end. And it idled up, it just took a minute. Out of gear. Choke. Spark. That's good. I think there's definitely some throttle adjustment I need to do, but 
I think that's as far as I'm going to go without putting cooling in it. Um, there's no way that thing got super hot, so don't even worry about it. Have you ever driven in your car? It takes like five minutes to warm up. All right, so yeah, nothing's like, the block isn't even hot. I think I'm touching it right now. The governor's acting a little weird. At least I think so. It might just take a minute to warm up to run on four, but, and then we kept getting a lot of, uh, man, there was a lot of stuff coming out the carb, so. Keep this starter cool. Guess I can keep the block cool too. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I know that the clutch feels real, the clutch needs adjusted. It's like way at the end, but, uh, I was riding it there for a little bit and I, I don't really want to ride the clutch too much, you know? I really don't want to split the tractor in half. Plus I think the clutch is like a thousand bucks or something. Okay, so proper wiring, probably proper fuel. How much do we do on that? Yeah, we burned, it's running off the bottle, so and we're not doing any ether. I don't know if you saw, I was playing with this, I, I, adjusted this idled screw all the way in and it's still the governor still wanted to hold that thing at like full speed so I'm wondering if it just needs uh, you know adjusted you know adjust it bring it all the way down I don't want to play with the timing anymore because I feel like I'm pretty close so I might lock that in all right cooling system rad hoses steering and we could drive this over there. I'm, I'm super psyched. Thanks, guys. And the frogs are singing and everything. So I just cleaned these out. They had a bunch of ant holes in them. See? All that mud. guess that it's these two bolts so what the manual says to do is use grease or shellac to dress your gasket before you put it on so oh, that one's very dirty you don't want that that helps hold it in place but it also fills in some of the, the low spots I did this on one of the other gaskets too, uh, the oil pan, and it worked pretty well. So. I love how it says shellac, like old school. I guess people, I don't know, I guess you used to just buy shellac and just use it on everything. You know, like wood or I don't know. Those are things I don't know. Stay. I'm gonna go grab the oil pump. Alright, we're gonna clean all this, but I need a mock up on length first. I see, it's reversed, the water pump goes on, duh. It's my entertainment. Nice little Jake, he came by two days ago. Wanted to hang out. I think these were like really hard to get off actually. All right, so I just can't leave this thing not painted. Cause I know I'm gonna get water sitting in there. And so we're gonna splash some paint in here. This was full of mud. Look, I got grease there. I'm just right over that. 
the idea is just to uh you, you'll never see in here so just want to get not to rust through because what happens is when the loader um loads back it dumps you know a lot of stuff in here sometimes and uh this was just full of mud All right, we've got that on. We're gonna try radiator next. All right, so what I decided to do is put the steering back on so that um, I can get it closer to the garage here. Should save on some back and forth time. Because I, I forget something and I have to walk over there and then cleaning up every night I gotta pick up all my tools and stuff so so there's a shim pack on the power steering here all right guys so the goal is to bring this here so it's closer to the shop and I don't have to carry all my tools out I didn't film it but I ended up putting the um, steering back on that this coupling up here is like real seized so that was a pain um find out where this bracket goes that was one and then that's all shimmed up it's all messed this has to go under here don't worry about all that stuff guys uh, it's a nightmare to put back together so this will be my first time firing it with the water pump i'm gonna do it dry uh, i know you're not supposed to but uh yeah i don't care so i shouldn't be running it long enough to burn out that seal um i guess i could just take the belt off yeah i'm gonna do that i just tension that sucker too there it is okay that doing that it like it fires off good and then it just doesn't want to start after that it doesn't matter if you give it ether it doesn't matter if you give it nothing it's kind of like it's flooded which it could be so I'm gonna let it sit clean this all up right. last attempt of the night And I, that was three days straight of working on this. 
All right, we're gonna try to start it again. A couple days later. saw that one. I need a better fuel tank set up. It's just dangerous now. It's just running on three or the timing's off or what? Alright, we're gonna need more gas, so. 
Okay, so for some reason I'm getting too much fuel, and I'm thinking maybe it has to do with the air cleaner. Um, the danger, I guess, is I'm dripping fuel back, so it could drip into here, but I think I'm going to pull the air cleaner off, fully clean that, and then uh, see if that changes anything, so... Air cleaner out. A tube out. Let's go clean these up. See if that helps any. Can't find my wire brush. Get this little thing. It's not terrible. It's not great. We'll clean that up real good and then give that a shot. Okay. So the one thing I changed since it ran well last time was I tweaked this governor arm out like another inch and I'm thinking that was a bad idea. I'm thinking that's too far. So I'm going to try it again and play with the governor if I can get it to idle. I just want it to run so I can move it over. Alright, so I had to walk away from trying to start it for a minute here. I'm gonna size this up. Now we can play with this a good bit, but I also don't want it to hit the belt. So let's go grab the belt. Clean cut like that. I'm not going to cut it yet, but radiator's about here. That freaking has was $24. Guy said it was $16, and then when he rang me up, it was $24. Killing me. Alright, getting to get this started. Spin the water pump dry. Okay, I forgot to hit record. But my radiator is leaking and I just spent three hours last night and an hour this morning hooking it all up. So, we're still gonna run it. Let's run this fucking thing. Oh my god, I can't believe that. Alright, so this will be the first run since we changed the uh, that spark thing. Alright, so I've been playing with timing and fuel and everything for 
couple hours here. Um, I did just get it to run decent. I think my goal is going to be to go drive forward and drive backwards. I don't have the steering hooked up, but uh, if that charge gives it enough boost here, it should run. Um, it runs decent at high RPM. It won't idle still, but we're getting somewhere. Goodness, Dada is shaking. <laughs> oh yeah! Alright, so big success on the tractor running there. But one of the things that's preventing me from really getting it dialed in is uh, this fuel tank. So I went out and bought some apple cider vinegar at Menards. And I'm going to pull this off here as to not get any more crap in here that than I need. Okay, so super rusty. Um, we'll clean that off real good. Any of these little rust things get in the carb, it's it's game over. <coughs> we'll be cleaning the carb every ten minutes. So I think there's actually fuel still in there. Um, although that plug was nice to slosh this around. 
So let's see if there's anything in here. Fill it up and let it sit for a little bit. And it's sloshed around. This stuff is pretty cheap. It's only like a dollar, so and it does work. I've tried it on a few vehicles. It kind of stinks, but and it will actually eat through your tank. I don't know if I should put the third one in or I'm going to rinse it and let that sit for a little bit. 